All right, now let's see what this VZ 2008 does. All right, this is really short range, but we want to get a function check on this new rifle. Hey Gearheads, Jeff at Gear Report. Today we're going to talk about the VZ 2008 from Century Arms. This may look like an AK to you from a little bit of a distance, but trust me, it, it's not. It has a very different uh, operating system. Uh, this is a striker fired uh, paratrooper version of the rifle with a folding stock. And as you can see, it's a very short folding stock. Uh, here's what it comes with. It's got the cleaning kit, two magazines in the package that we bought from Palmetto State Armory and the rifle itself. Kind of bare bones, but at least, you know, you have the cleaning kit. As you can see, it shoots pretty well. No complaints with it from me. We'll see Brian in the background when he shoots. He has a little bit of an issue. Here's the specs. Uh, different from an AK, it has a machined receiver, and that's done here in the U.S., same as the barrel. Non-reflective finish after they bead blast it. Comes with a cleaning kit, 16 and a quarter inch, 1 to 9.5 inch twist barrel. With the paratrooper stock folded, it's 27 inches long. With that stock open and extended, 35 and a half inches. Seven pounds may not seem like it's incredibly light for, but, you know, for this type of rifle, compared to what you typically find with an AK, for example, well, this is actually fairly light. Please note it does not use AK-47 magazines. You have to get mags specifically for the VC-2008 or the VZ-58, which is the automatic you know, military police version that's still used in Europe. You can see disassembly breaks into some reasonably sized major components. Not a lot of small parts to get lost here. Came apart pretty easily, went back together pretty easily. The pins for disassembly are actually retained so you don't actually set things aside. I really like the way it operates and note that this is a 762 by 39 caliber rifle. So if you believe all the stories of readily available cheap 762 by 39 ammunition, it's so cheap to shoot compared to shooting 223 in an AR. Well, yes, there's some truth to that if you buy the cheap Russian stuff. You can get steel cased ammo. You got to be careful that it's not corrosive. If you get corrosive, it's not the end of the world. You just have to clean the rifle a lot more thoroughly, a lot more quickly. You can't let it sit as long without having some damage. If you're a reloader like me th this is one of these calibers that can get a little bit frustrating because everyone talks about cheap ammo everywhere but if you want to reload it the cases that are reloadable not the burden prime but the actual boxer prime brass cases they're much more difficult to find and much more expensive than what you find with the steel cased ammo it makes sense but you know it's a real consideration that I think a lot of people overlook because there is such a public perception that 762 by 39 ammo is just dirt cheap. And that's not exactly true. There is some 762 by 39 that's cheap. There, <laughs> not, not everything though. So just be aware of that. So for me, I put probably 40, 45 rounds through the VZ 2008 since receiving it. I did strip it down, cleaned it with fire clean. They were nice enough to send a bottle for us to try out. They say it's an advanced gun oil that cleans, lubricates, and conditions. We'll see. So far, I haven't had any issues personally with the VZ 2008. Brian, however, you see in the video, Brian in the blue shirt is one of the most experienced shooters here at Gear Report. So the man knows how to shoot. He knows how to operate the trigger of a rifle. Something that I'm perplexed about at this point, since between the two of us we've probably put 60 rounds through this rifle. I had zero issues with this rifle. The rifle cycled fine. It fed ammunition fine. Everything worked great. Brian sits down, starts pulling the trigger, and after probably half of his trigger pulls, the trigger just goes limp on him. So I don't know what's going on. Like I said, the man knows how to shoot. He knows how a trigger operates, yet he was not getting the trigger to reset. I don't know. Brian doesn't know. Maybe he wasn't letting the trigger out far enough that it would reset fully. What we found is cycling the safety from fire 
to safe and then back to fire, somehow magically reset the trigger. So uh, maybe if someone understands the operating mechanism of the VZ2008 trigger well enough to take that information and come up with a solution, here's what was happening, please let us know. The baffling part is we were not able to duplicate it between the two of us. Brian, very consistent, 50, 60% of the time he pulled the trigger, it fires and then as he releases and goes to pull again, it's, it's just limp. He can pull it, release it all day long, nothing happens, cycle the safety, and now the trigger's live again. I shot, never had any issues with the trigger. So not clear what's going on there. Uh, if you have any ideas, let us know. Is it not keeps, resetting? Yeah, it keeps doing this where then, oh wow. But then it'll, I'm not doing anything to it and it'll, that's what's going bizarre. On. I'll put it back on safe and then put it back over and see if it... Okay, it feels ready now again. And it, it just did it again, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm get it again. That's bizarre. Okay. Well, I wonder if uh, we had it in the wrong mode somehow. I mean, I thought when I read the manual it said this points to either safe or fire, but it actually went to here, right? So let's right. see if it does anything in it. I mean, it doesn't look like it would, but... No? No, same sponge trigger? Alright, is that supposed to be out? I'm sure everything's in, yeah. We've already seen a little bit of video of this being shot, but we're, we're not here to talk about the whole gun today. Really just want to talk about one thing. You see it sitting here, the little, I don't know, do they call this a muzzle brake? Root of the problem, let's put it on some lighter camo here. This little half circle, that little indention is where the device indexes. There's one installed here where it indexes on the barrel. Looking from the side, actually looks about perfect because the gun is actually... Um, laying flat on the table and I'm holding the camera at an angle. If I hold the gun directly above, now you can see the problem. The way that the little uh, half circle indexes with this pin on the front of the barrel, get the light on here well, it's not lined up right. This is canted at an angle instead of being flat. I, my expectation is that uh, you know if this is parallel to the tabletop then the uh, the plane that cuts across here should be perpendicular to the tabletop not canted at uh, I'm gonna guess this is 20 degrees or so I don't know it, it doesn't look right to me so I sent Century a note I went back and forth filled out a form waited for a week or two and eventually received this new one but it's got the exact same problem. I could take that, I could take the old one off and put this one on, but I know it's gonna be exactly the same thing because unless I am completely getting this wrong, this little indexing notch should be centered on the top of the circle. Let's see if we can get an angle here. There we go. That, uh, that right there shows you the issue. That is turned to the side. This video is for the customer service guy at Sentry because I seem to be having uh, a little bit of an issue communicating to him what the problem was. And I was very surprised to get another one of these muzzle end devices that has the little indexing pinhole, uh, not at the 12 o'clock position, 
making the uh, the whole device mount uh, canted off to the side. So hopefully this video clears it up a bit. Thanks.